Welcome back painting friends. Today we are going to paint a fall gnome. You're going to need light blue, white, brown, yellow, orange, green, and blue paint. Don't forget to have a rag handy for keeping your brushes clean as well as a cup of water. The brushes I like to use are my one inch flat brush as well as my 10, four, and one round brush. So let's get ready. By the way, I am painting in the middle of the day so you get this beautiful um, light shining down from my all glass studio up there. I can't complain. All right, I'm gonna start with my um, one inch round brush and I'm gonna start with my light blue paint. I'm just gonna paint my background. So about a third of the way up, I could just make a line across because everything below that's gonna be grass, but everything above it's gonna be this great light blue color. Now, I don't want my whole background being the same color, so now I'm gonna take some of this white paint and I'm gonna make letter X's over the background. I just wanna give it a little bit of an interesting texture of some white and some blue. I can take my brush, I can wipe it off, and everything below that I am gonna paint in green, except I'm gonna take my corners and just kinda of lift them up a little bit. So everything below that little smiley face is going to be green. Same brush, I'm gonna take just a little spot of blue and I'm gonna drop some blue right up here along this top area. And then I can go ahead and brush these colors in. That just makes it a little bit darker of a color right back there at the horizon line. I could just pull that blue down, just kind of blend it in with my greens. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush off and let my painting dry. When we come back, we'll add in our next layer. With a dry background, I'm gonna take my number 10 round brush and I'm gonna put my tree in. So my tree is gonna really just kind of go along this edge right here. So I'm gonna make a, a gentle curved line right here. And my little roots are just gonna kind of be scrumbly along the bottom here. Just wavy, jagged lines. I'm gonna go ahead and paint my tree in with this dark brown color. Right about here, I'm gonna make a branch that just kind of shoots off, leaving a little bit of open space. Another one that just kind of shoots off there, just to have a little bit of that blue in there. I'm gonna switch over to my number four round brush and add a couple of smaller branches. So I'm gonna take my brown paint and water it down just a little bit so that it goes on a little bit smoother. And I can add on just a few more branches. I like to make my branches to look like the letter Y having one arm just a little bit longer than the other. And some of these branches, they might get an extra little line or two on them. Now with that same brush, um, with that watered down brown paint, I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white paint on my brush and I'm gonna dot just a couple of random spots of white paint on my tree trunk. I can wipe that brush off then and I can start to just kind of pull these colors on up into my tree or even from the top on down into my tree. Leaving no white marks behind, but what I will leave behind is this trail of white, which is going to help it look like um, tree bark. Wash 
that brush off. Now I'm gonna focus on my um, greenery down here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some areas where I've got straight green on my brush and I could just make lines that kind of come up. I can also do areas that have green and blue on my brush and pull those lines up. And then last but not least, I could do areas that have green and yellow on my brush and pull some of those lines up. What I'm looking for is really just to give my, the whole base of my picture um, some texture of grass. So that means that I really wanna make those lines kind of skinny and tall and allow them to go different directions. I don't need them all to go the same direction. But this whole entire bottom area down here, I'm gonna fill in with that green grass texture. So some plain green, some green and yellow, and some green and blue. So now that our grass is finished, let's go ahead and add our gnome in. So my gnome is gonna be right here in the middle. Um, and I'm gonna zoom you in just a little bit so that you can see his full body being put together. All right, I'm gonna start off with some white paint just to kind of lay out his beard. So my gnome's beard is really gonna have a, a kind of a straight line right up here at the top. And it's gonna be a big, huge bubble at the bottom. So it kind of looks like, a, you know, like a witch's cauldron, doesn't it? From there, I'm gonna lay out where my hat is gonna be, and your hat, your gnome cat, you know, any way you want. But I'm gonna have a rectangle down here at the base. And then I'm going to make it kind of curve up and flop over. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint my beard in white. This is just layer one of my beard, but I wanna make sure I don't see through to that blue in the background. And you can edit your colors of your hat and your body as you want them to be. Um, I'm gonna make my hat a dark blue color and I'm going to make my body a yellow color. So I'm gonna use dark blue. And I'm just gonna paint the hat in. Now, while this paint is still wet, I am gonna go ahead and add some details on here. So for example, up here at the top, I'm gonna to add some white for it to look like there's a highlight. And there's gonna be a really nice big crease right here for a highlight, and as well as one right here. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of brown back in here and some lines 
to show where the hat is kind of creasing when it folds over. Just little itty bitty lines with brown. Now, these white lines, I'm just gonna gently kind of brush in together. And kind of blend them. His belly, like I said, I am going to make it be um, a yellow color. So, or sorry, not his belly, his body, but he just kind of hides in the bushes. So, all you really have to do is kind of bring some of that yellow on down. And then you could pull some of those grass colors up right in front of them. While we let this dry, um, I am gonna go ahead and pull some of these little lines out just a little bit, give them a little scraggly, roughly beard here. We don't want it to be nice and trim because he is a gnome after all. But we are gonna zoom back out and we will work on our tree while we are allowing these to dry up a little bit. So we are making a fall gnome and a fall tree. So let's talk about fall leaves. Um, I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush with a mixture of some orange and red, and I, not red, orange and yellow, and I am just going to add some random dotted areas for some leaves. I do wanna see my branches behind it, so I'm not gonna overly cover these but I can even take some of these and drop them on the ground, just like leaves would actually do in the winter, maybe even one or two on the hat of my gnome. I'm gonna let this dry and we come back, we'll add in our final details. With a mostly dry background, I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, and a lot of white and make a skin color. And with that skin color, I am gonna put my little gnome's nose right here, which is a big, huge circle. Wipe that brush off. And I'm gonna be taking some white paint with just a spot of brown paint to make my gnome beard. So I've got mostly white, a little spot of brown, and I'm gonna make little wavy lines that kind of come down from his 
hat down to his belly. show a slight shadow underneath his hat. I'm just gonna go with a little bit of brown paint and kind of dab right along that edge. Just dab, I mean, super, super, super little with my number four round brush. Almost no color on there. Just a little bit of dark right here underneath his hat. And the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some wind going into my background with some leaves in it. So from over here, I'm just going to make a couple of swoops and swirls that are going to look like wind coming in from the side. And with those little wind lines, I'm going to add just a couple, not very many, just a couple of leaves that have possibly blown off my tree. And I'm using my smaller brush, so I want these to look like they're a little bit more in the background. Our fall gnome. Now don't forget when you are done painting your picture you need to sign your name. I always pick a color that shows up well and I put my initials in the bottom right corner. Don't forget that I never get to see what you're doing at home unless you post it on our Facebook page Painting with a Purpose. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel Painting with a Purpose so you're kept up to date on all of our latest tutorials. And remember as always stay kind, stay creative, and stay safe. Have a great day, friends. Bye now.